It's the standard Christian rhetoric. We love you, but you'll burn in hell for living a lifestyle that is different to mine. I don't think anyone who believes in that has actually ever gone to a gay pride, for example. Everything is all about how people are going against God. Conveniently matching up with a person's prejudices about gay people. Isn't it just like, you know, look at that for a second. You know, everything that they're trying to project onto you isn't anything to do with God. It's to do with everything they can find that matches up with their own personal beliefs. It's very easy to counter these hate claims. Oh, I'm being mature here. But we're not talking about childish hate like on Xbox. This is hate on the level of insidious undercutting of another human being's right to exist and think for themselves. That's somewhat worse in many ways. This is not mine, nor his first time engaging people at a Christian propaganda. I've seen this many times before. So some of the classic fallacies used here are obviously the no true Scotsman, or no true Christian would support gay people. Oh, but this, this, but does this guy, does he let snakes bite him like it says so in the Bible? No? Well, you must not be a true Christian then. So either you're a fundamentalist, a fundamentalist, either a fundamentalist or a progressive. A progressive means changing your mind. He's just scared of uncertainty, that's all he's doing. St the next one's strawman, obviously. Only extreme Christians can be considered hateful because they're the ones that are going all out of the way to deny someone's right to exist. Denying someone their rights is still hatred, no matter what level. Being a moderately hateful person is still hateful. Next one is a contradiction. You see where he says stuff like, oh, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but then he instantly goes into saying, well, he tells us all to do our research. That's a cl classic gem that we've always heard for. And then he talks about all the satanic media outlets are manipulating us. Now, Grey Day is allegedly the media, despite just being a person on YouTube trying to make content. You know, he's exactly the same person as this guy, just some bloke in a room recording on a microphone. The next one is obviously the usual one they use, is proselytizing. I can never remember how to pronounce that properly. I hate the word anyway. It's the usual thing where they get the Bible quotes and use them to determine the truth, despite never actually backing up that claim as to why the Bible quote is actually true or not. It's a common theme used by preachers. They just assume that the Bible is an authority. Naturally, they believe that, but they don't realise that you don't. And then they try and use it to influence you. I mean, even if you're not Christian, it's like they don't quite get the uh, irony that, you know, they don't believe that to begin with. So why would we? Why would they kind of change their mind because of it? And then there's the other non sequitur. This is the usual sin nonsense. So by invoking sin, you essentially defeat your own argument because nowhere does any Christian explain what sin actually is, what metaphysical state it is, or what it even represents. It's just a simple argument of sin equals I win the argument. Because you can just use that to justify about anything. I mean, just read some Nietzsche on the matter to see how much bullshit sin is. I mean, sin is essentially the boogeyman of guilt. The unfathomable quality of guilt that you cannot argue against because no one knows what the fuck it actually is. It's just this thing that does exist because we say it exists. And you've got it whether you like it or not. And that determines that you're bad. Then there's the other stuff like the appeal to emotion, where it's like, it's a good thing people burn in hell for their sins. I mean, ignoring the fact that why burning in hell for eternity is justice for, for a good thing or anything. It's like saying, how would, say for instance, if I, you know, you could, you could argue, I'm not saying you would, but you could argue that if you murder someone, that that person in an ideal world could then murder you back as part of the justice. That would be seen, at least on, you know, on some level of balanced and fair but would you say that because you then go out and murder someone all that emotional paint up hate and stuff is then somehow translatable into an infinite amount of torture how, how does that balance out in any form of you know it's just it's just people with that kind of sick twisted hatred of anyone just they like to channel it I mean, he equates homosexuality to the same thing. He says he wants vengeance, and thus it's good that people burn in hell for eternity. Evil is evil, he says. There is nothing wrong with righteous justice. If you don't accept Jesus, you'll pay the penalty. I mean, number six right there is hate speech. I mean, exactly the definition of hate speech. I, you are evil, I hate evil, I will be happy when you burn in hell for eternity because I say it's a good thing. And that is just channeling hatred. There's nothing else to it. I mean, I gave up after that point because there's, there's enough evidence already to construct a suitable debunking of his entire case. He's just a hate breacher, that's all he is. He's using the usual Christian sophism and rhetoric to incite hatred. It's no, no, nothing to be afraid of, nothing to be upset or anxious over. It's, it's, you know, this has been finely tuned over years, but it doesn't mean it's not bullshit.